We can all agree that getting gear in Rust can be difficult, especially if you're not too good at the game. But there's enough gas station roof campers to prove that even those with the smoothest brains can still work their way up to an AK kit. As for all of us normal and sane players, we use various different methods to get gear in Rust. While Spoon Kid's paid actors might tell you otherwise, no. grubbing is one of the most skillful and my personal favorite way of getting loot. So I'm going to lay out my science for all of you that are aspiring to become a leech on the Rust community's underbelly. Alright, so as you can see here, the x-axis represents the number of grub attempts, the y -axis Access here represents your chances of success. A higher number of grubbing attempts directly correlates with higher chances of success. And for all you math people out there, no, I didn't pass geometry. I don't know if this makes sense. But because of the science we just proved with this graph, we're going to orient our playstyle in a way that maximizes the number of attempts we can do in the shortest amount of time possible. The first step in maximizing these attempts is picking the right location. <laughs> I promise you, every server has that one group that's completely oblivious to the fact they're even playing a video game. They got those backwards gates, the no TC protection, and like four stacks of 556 when they're using a Thompson. You just gotta find these people, and if you can't, just look for an area that's kind of active. But just remember, the closer you live to the people you're grubbing from, the higher the chances are that you're gonna get raided. So, you know, maybe stepping back a square or two, giving these people their personal space might be the move. Another really important factor for grubbing that most people overlook is the base. Now, you can really use whatever starter base you want, it's just important what you do inside side of the base. But here's the base I did. Slap down a couple foundations, a low foundation here, walls there, low wall there, roof there, furnish the interior, throw some doors down, and you're done. The important thing is that you constantly have a ready supply of grubbing tools at your disposal. These are going to be your Eokas, your water pipe shotguns, and your double barrel shotguns. These are cheap to craft, easy to use, deal a lot of damage, and great at destroying the hopes and dreams of people with actual gear. So just keep your furnaces running with metal, keep a good amount of wood in the base. That way whenever you die, you can instantly respawn, grab another weapon, and get back out into the fight. Now the final and most important thing to grubbing is your placement. When you pull up to a big fight, you can't just run out into the middle of it. You're gonna get spotted and killed instantly. You goofball, don't do that. It's important you move carefully and position yourself well. That way you can actually grub some gear and get out of there before anyone notices. This is best by finding some cover, just hiding in the fight. And the best thing to look for is some stragglers. You know, maybe that one clan member that's a little slow and tends to fall behind the group. That's the perfect target. You can sneak up on him, DB him, take his stuff. And the rest of the group probably won't care because this is definitely the type of guy that puts rocks and torches inside the gun box. And if you perfectly follow the science I've laid out in front of you, there's no doubt in my mind that you're going to become a successful grub. Hopefully this video helped you guys get out there, grub some gear, take some AK kits, and make me proud. And uh, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye.